the Pope Francis accelerated the critic of Eurocentrism and called for, for a renewal of the West. In his Evangelii Gaudium, Francis clearly states that the papacy and the central structures of the universal church need to hear the call to pastoral conversion. What does he mean when he refers to conversion? What is the, the conversion the church needs? Well, well, thank you. Uh, first of all, thank you for having me. It's a, it's a pleasure to talk, talk to you about the geopolitics of the Catholic Church. And, and um, I think this is a good starting question because it shows the central elements of Pope's, uh, Pope Francis's papacy. Uh, and these two elements, one is internal, EU internal, uh, church internal, and one is external. And the internal one is the focus on decentralization and what Pope Francis calls clericalization. And the, the external one is then the fight against poverty. Uh, so so this, this one central element, where, and I think it's also related to the call for pastoral conversion, but please note that he says that central structures, the central structures of the church need to hear the call to pastoral conversion. So in a sense, it's also a critique of these central structures. Um, and, and this call also, I think, has far-reaching geopolitical consequences because what he basically says that, um, that we should decentralize the church, decentralize, that is, give more attention to um, parishes, dioceses, the local churches, kind of. But the problem is, of course, that the local churches have widely different views, local Catholic churches. So what it may lead to is a greater visibility of the political struggles within the church, political divergences. To give you a concrete example, Pope Francis called for what he called a synodal path. We, should, we now are having three years of a synod on the level of dioceses and I mean, the local dioceses and then to the universal church. And if you look at the results of these discussions locally, in Germany, they talk about uh, uh, women in the church, about uh, blessing same-sex unions in the Catholic Church. In the United States, the bishops' conferences has just decided to draft a document that clearly targets President Biden and the more liberal uh, Catholics, right? So as you can see, the synodal paths or journeys may lead to widely different outcomes, political or geopolitically speaking, in European countries, in the United States, not to speak of the South, uh, of the church in the South, which in many ways is even more conservative than the, than the church in the United States. So, so it is an interesting experiment, but this experiment has uh, substantive consequences and is in some ways quite, quite risky. For the church. In his uh, recent, recent encyclical, Fratelli Tutti, Pope Francis lays out a, a summary of his comprehensive uh, political program. The European Union, according to him, is the epitome of, secular, of secularism on the European continent. In this document, he deliberately avoids speaking about the positive aspects of secular societies, such as uh, Europe. What is the reason? behind this choice? Mm. Well, one reason clearly is that, uh, that the Pope is simply much more interested in the South, globally speaking, as I already indicated. Uh, that, is, that is his main uh, kind of topic, moving the church institutionally in terms of the dis composition of the decision-making structures towards the South. So, so Europe has never been his focus and neither has been uh, the European Union. He simply, it seems to me that uh, he, to some extent, even does not really understand fully what the European Union is about. Uh, a kind of example of this, uh, of this approach of his is the uh, famous, or at least let's, let's call it controversial address he gave to the European Parliament in 2014, in uh, November 2014, where he talked about Europe about as, as a grandmother, no longer, now, now I'm quoting, no longer fertile, no longer vibrant. And then he had added in other documents that Europe is aging and a tired, pessimistic, 
that Europe is going through a period of dramatic sterility. So as you can see, the, the, the adjectives he uses are all rather critical, rather critical. And for him, the future of the church lies in the South. So, so this is one of the reasons why Europe is totally on the sidelines. Uh, and especially if you compare uh, Francis with his predecessors, Benedict, and of course, John Paul II, for them, Europe was absolutely central for understanding what the church is about. So instead, Francis is all about the South. Uh, you can see that, of course, you know, the shift to the south is, takes place with different speed at different levels, right? So if, for instance, if you look at the College of the Cardinals, still the, the vast majority of cardinals, um, I think it's more than 130, are from Europe or from uh, North America, whereas only around 90 are from the south. Right? So you can see that still the majority of cardinals are from the north. So it is happening very slowly. But Pope Francis, for instance, in every consistory when he was naming new cardinals, always named at least half of those from southern, globally speaking, southern countries. So there is this shift he's trying to accelerate uh, towards the south, towards Africa, India, China, these are countries that he's interested in. Pope Francis claimed that he had to, and I cite, he had to go to Asia because Pope Benedict did not have time to go to Asia. And, he, and it is important. Francis' efforts toward China culminated in the provisional agreement signed on 22 September 2018, which paves the way for further steps between the two, the two actors. But the Pope's approach has been criticized as being too, uh, too equivalent. He once said that, and I, and I said again, on the civil and political level, Chinese Catholics must be good citizens, thus not overtly criticizing the Communist Party. What is Pope Francis' strategy toward China? And how do the, how do the United States view the reorientation of the church toward the, the South? Mm -hmm. Well, China clearly is a major topic and major point of disagreement between uh, Pope Francis and the United States, especially when talking about President Trump. I mean, the deep disagreement between President Trump and Pope Francis was plain to see for, for everyone, not only on China, but also on a number of other issues. Um, but what is perhaps less visible is the fact that there is also a disagreement between Pope Francis and the majority of US bishops, US Catholic bishops. So, so it's not only a struggle between the church and uh, the US administration, but also an intra-church uh, struggle. And we have to bear that in mind when we talk about, for instance, the critique of capitalism, which is one of the great uh, big themes for Pope Francis. Um, um, this is a struggle in the church as well, or where we talk about the divorced people, LGBT persons, etc. But one of these big points is of course, is of course China. It's a very specific and perplexing point. Perhaps I should just uh, remind those who listen to us that that China, in fact, is not, if you look at the numbers at present, it is not so important for the Catholic Church. There are more Catholics in, let's say, Tanzania than in China, right? There are different estimates, but around 10 to 12 million Catholics. So, so the interesting thing, and that's a thing that we see not only regarding China, but also other topics, the Church kind of thinks more about how that region or that country might be potentially interesting uh, for the church in the future, right? And you will see it when uh, the Pope, Pope Francis speaks about China, he very, very often speaks about a, um, uh, the, this, this might be the future of the church, not the present. So for this, this is one of the reasons why he's really very cautious about criticizing China. He almost never, he has never mentioned Uyghurs. In one book, he made a passing reference to a Muslim minority. He 
um, but, but the Pope didn't mention them. Um, and he signed this agreement. This agreement has been extended. Uh, in the meantime, the agreement was criticized by State Secretary Pompeo. Um, again, I talk about, I'm talking about Trump administration. Uh, for you, particularly, it might be interesting that then there was a kind of polemical polemic between, between the US administration and, and uh, the church in L'Osservatore Romano. And there, the argument was that uh, while the church thinks in religious and pastoral terms, the United States government thinks in geopolitical uh, terms. So he really made, they made reference to geopolitics versus religious concerns, which I think is a wrong distinction, wrong distinction, because we can, we can see very clearly with the Chinese case that these two things mix together, right? You cannot really say that what the Pope does regarding China is not political or geopolitical because it has uh, geopolitical consequences. Uh, but this, you know, is a, probably the most controversial uh, topic for Pope Francis because the uh, Chinese um, government is not is tightening its grip on religious minorities. The persecution of Catholics is increase, even Catholics is increasing in China, and at the same time, they are, I mean, the Pope and and um, China are trying to. Or, had extended the, the agreement. So, so it's a kind of um, uh, double-edged sword, you know, uh, cultivating good relations with uh, the Chinese rulers while at the same time risking alienating uh, the believers who are persecuted. But clearly China is one of the big topics for, for the future of the church. And I'd like to finish with uh, a brief and short question about Africa. What role plays Africa in the Catholic geopolitical narrative, and how does it fit in the in the renewal of, of the the Church? Mm -hmm. Well, again, you know, in a, some ways, it is similar to what I just said about China. It is not. Uh, it is much more about the future and the growth of. Of the, of the church, because as you know, there are regions in the world where the church is becoming weaker in terms of the numbers of believers and there are other, other parts of the world where it is growing. And, and the growth in Africa is the fastest of all. To give you some concrete, uh, some concrete numbers, in uh, 910, there was approximately 1 million Catholic, Catholics in Sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, 100 years later, in 20, 2010, you have more than 170 million Catholics. So you can see that it is an exponential growth. And this growth will continue uh, in the future. So there are projections that say that in 2050, at least three or even four or five of the top 10 Catholic countries in the world um, will be in Africa. Countries like Nigeria, Uganda, and Congo will, will have more uh, 100 million Catholics or even more. You know, so it really shows that, that there is a very quick growth that also, of course, is related to the, it's not about conversions, it's mainly about the population growth in, in general. Um, and that is why Africa is really is really important for the church. Also, the church in Africa, the local Catholic church, is more self-confident, more influential in the public life. Um, and the reason for this is that the, the church there fulfills many roles uh, that the state is providing in the West, uh, such as healthcare, education, vaccination, you know, a topical thing today. Uh, all these things are uh, done, done by the church. So it is much more influential, but we have to remember that the church in Africa is also much more socially conservative. So when we talk, and that applies not only to Catholics, but also to other Christian communities, um, uh, Anglicans, for instance. So it, again, when talking about the global political divisions that exist under the surface in the church, I think this kind of tension between the more liberal uh, outlook of uh, some European Catholic countries, such as Germany or France, to some extent, uh, 
is very different from, from the views that you might hear from people that I heard from people uh, be presenting the African church. So it is the future of the church to some extent, but also again, therein lies the, 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 the risk uh, that uh, Pope Francis or his successor will have to deal with how to overcome these growing differences within, within the global church. Okay, thank you very much. Again, this was very interesting and I really thank you very much for this opportunity you gave us.